Hi friends. What's on my mind today? Well, I was going to go. Wait, somebody's calling me. What are you asking me? I want to ask you if I ever told you what my friend Donna Mickler's last name was. I don't know your friend Donna Mickler. What, are, what was her last name? Mickler. Oh, fool. <laughs> I thought you meant after she got married. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even imagine her being married. <laughs> why, why am I coming all the way over here for that conversation? I don't know. Because <laughs> I have a need to talk and I thought you had a need to listen. Wrong. Wrong. Hi, friends. What's on my mind today? Well, I was gonna go out there and sit by the island and make a video because I'm tired of the echo in this room. And uh, I decided I'd work on my sound quality today. Well, that didn't work because the wind came up and then I'd need a different camera and a microphone. About the time I was thinking about that, the guy next door started sawing tile. He's redoing his bathroom. So I came up with this. What do you think? It's the cushions off of the purple couch set up like a little sound booth. And I've tried this and I think it's going to work real well. So, um, I hope that you're getting less echo, but now I'm not totally happy with the lighting, so we're going to go with this for now. I'll keep working on it. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So what's really on my mind today? Well, uh, as a lot of days, a comment. <laughs> and uh, these were nice comments that I enjoyed. I do enjoy your comments, and um, if you haven't noticed, I answer most of them. Let me talk about giving you a heart. The reason that YouTubes do that is because when we go back through the comments to see where we left off answering them, and if you have several hundred a day, uh, this can get to be a chore, the heart tells us where we left off. It doesn't necessarily mean we loved your comment. I think it would be more um, accurate to say if you don't get a heart, we didn't like your comment. <clears throat> anyway, I liked this comment and it was from Frosty Owl Mum. Frosty Owl Mum wrote, can you do more Q&A, Jerry? Yep, <laughs> that's what we're going to do today. Uh, here was the question. Did you and your wife think about the possibility of a home along the Pacific or the Gulf at all? Well, not very seriously, and I'll tell you why. Um, we came from Portland, Oregon after 27 years in the rain, and yes, we were looking for sunshine, but not too much of it. We've been to many places all along the Pacific coast of Mexico, and uh, we enjoyed the beach in December. In July, it's hot and it's humid. There are several months of the year that you just do not want to be on the beach any time of the day between, say, 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's just hot and humid, and you'll be living inside in air conditioning and maybe getting some enjoyable hours in the evening. Up here in the mountains at 5,200 uh, feet in elevation, it's never, ever hot and humid. Um, we, st we, we live with our doors and windows open all year round. So, no, we did not consider a permanent place to live anywhere near a beach in Mexico. Um, that would be good for December and January, maybe, not the rest of the year for us. I used to live in Florida, so I know what I'm talking about, and I've been to beaches in many different places in the world, and 
I'm not really a beach person anyway, but that's why we did not look for a place along the coast. Uh, oh, speaking of the coast, we also have friends. We have a, a very good friend who lives in Manzanillo in uh, Brisis, and um, we're able to go and stay there and enjoy. She has a house right on the beach with a big swimming pool right on the beach also, so you can swim and listen to the waves at the same time, swim in her pool. Uh, and we have another friend who has a, a, a couple who have a house in uh, Guayabitas. And we haven't been there, but we've been invited a couple of times, and uh, uh, we look forward to doing that sometime. And I only mention it so that you don't forget it, and you know who you are. <laughs> uh, room 183, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that room is not a word for cell. <laughs> room 183 says, Hi, JC. I'm a recent subscriber in California. I have some questions for you. Does mail get delivered to each home? Yes, mail gets delivered to each home. A guy comes around with a motorcycle. Um, whether or not it gets delivered in a timely fashion may be another question. Uh, when I order stuff from... Uh, I, I order stuff from a website in China, and it takes, uh, it takes one day to get from Hong Kong or Singapore to Mexico City. And then it takes about five weeks to get from Mexico City to Ahihik. And once it gets to Ahihik, um, several times I've had to go down to the post office and give them a tracking number and say, where is this? And uh, a couple of days later, they'll bring it to my house. Uh, you would think that that might be an unusual occurrence, but it's happened over and over again. Uh, the last thing I ordered, I ordered it in March, and I went down there at the end of April and said, you, can you find this? And two days later, he brought it to my house on the motorcycle. That's the Mexican mail. Yes, they deliver to every house, eventually. <laughs> um, where was I? Would the mail system support a small eBay business? Well, uh, outgoing mail, you can, for about five pesos, which is like between two and three dollars, you can have a guaranteed 15-day delivery with a tracking number in the Mexican Postal Service. And I've used that a couple of times to mail stuff to the United States, and um, it worked. That's all I can tell you. One of them was a return of a, a, a Kindle to um, Amazon in Pennsylvania, and uh, it got there and it was no problem. And it cost, like I said, um, it was 52 pesos to mail the Kindle. So if you're mailing something small, I guess an eBay business that you um, covered your costs of uh, 3 to $5 for mailing, I guess the answer would be yes. It would support a small eBay business. And of course, uh, if you want to pay a little bit more, there's uh, Estafeta, UPS, FedEx, DHL. They're all got offices right here in Ahihik. Can utility bills be paid automatically or online? Yes, you can pay uh, bills online. You can pay your telephone bill online. You can pay your electric bill online. Um, your water bill, you, you get it once a year, so no, I don't think you can pay that online. Um, there's a story about that. <laughs> Years ago, I went to the telephone company and said, I'm leaving for three months. I would like to pay my telephone bill in advance. And the lady said, you can't do that. I said, well, how am I going to pay it? You know, this was before you could pay it on the Internet. You can pay it on the Internet now. Anyway, she says, you can't, make, you can't do that. And I asked several times, and it wasn't entirely a, a, a Spanish-English problem, but there was a communication gap there. And... Finally, I gave up after several tries and turned to leave, and she said, 
but you can make a deposit. <laughs> so I made a big deposit and they took the bill out of the deposit. And I've done the same thing with the electric company, only I had two meters. And one meter used a lot of electricity and the other meter didn't use much electricity. So uh, like, the, like the monthly, it's bi-monthly actually, every two months, the bill would be like uh, a little less than a thousand pesos for one of the meters, and the other one it would be like 50 or 60 pesos, a little bit of nothing. So I went and they said, well, you have to go out and, and actually make the deposits into the machine out in the hall over there in Chapala. So I went and um, I didn't really understand how to do it, so a guy came along to help me and we stuck my bill with, it's got a barcode on it, I stuck my bill in the machine and it said, you know, deposit your money. So I did. Well, I deposited several thousand pesos <laughs> into the one that uses none. I think I had figured it out. I had paid like seven years in advance. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that bill is still zero every month. <laughs> because they're still taking it out of my thousands of dollars pesos worth of deposit. Uh, so yeah, you can pay your bills online or in advance. Uh, if getting Social Security in the United States, do you file taxes in both countries? Well, you only have to file taxes if you make money. So if you don't make any money in Mexico, you don't have to file taxes in Mexico. In the United States, it doesn't matter where you go or where you make money, the uh, citizen of the United States is followed by the IRS to the odd ends of the earth. <laughs> you, you can live in Antarctica. You still have to file U.S. taxes if you're a U.S. citizen. So do you have to file in both countries? You have to file in the United States no matter what if you make money. If you don't make any money in Mexico, you don't need to file in Mexico. How much is car insurance? Uh, I have a van and I have a BMW and the van is about uh, 3,200 pesos. That's like $160, $170 at today's exchange rate uh, for a year. And that's liability only. It's an old van and I don't insure it for comprehensive. Plus, another reason for not doing that is because body work here is not like in the United States. It's inexpensive. Um, that old van of mine, before I brought it down here, um, my daughter-in-law borrowed it to move with and she dented up both side doors and tore a hole in the running board. Uh, I got a check from uh, Allstate Insurance for that for like $2,600 worth of damages. And I never had it fixed. I got it fixed down here for $175 total. So I don't have comprehensive. Just liability, $3,200 a year on the van. Uh, the BMW also only have liability on that. Um, and liability in Mexico, by the way, includes bail bond insurance, which means you get to call the insurance company's lawyer to keep you from going to jail if you have an accident. And that's important. Um, I think it's... It's about twice that much. It's like 3,000 pesos every six months, but it's because it's a sports car, high horsepower, whatever. It just costs a lot more in the van. Insurance, that's car insurance. Um, can you get a health care plan on a tourist visa? Yes, you can get a private health care plan on a tourist visa. You can't get the government IMS or Seguro Popular unless you are a, at least a temporary, that's temporal, resident of Mexico. And certainly you can as uh, Permanente. Thanks, I'm working my way through your videos. That was room 183. Uh, Diane, and, and she just wrote this today, which kind of inspired me to make the video I'm making. Hi, JC. I just recently have been watching your helpful videos on Mexico. I am thinking of retiring there, partly because it is too expensive to live in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that one. 
But I have a few questions I'm not sure you have answered yet. One, I have three cats. Can you drive your cats in carriers across the border in your car? Uh, is, is that feasible with regard to Mexican regulations? I'll have to wait a few years if it's not because they're my babies and they're young. <laughs> not to worry, Diane, you can drive through the border with your cats. Uh, you're required by uh, Mexican law to have current uh, vaccinations and a medical certificate, I believe within the last 30 days from a vet that you know, says, yeah, they're healthy. Um, that's the law. The practical thing is, but don't do it without these paperwork, but this paperwork, but I have never been asked, and I haven't done it for a few years, but I went back and forth with two cats in my motorhome and nobody ever asked about it. Uh, and I know other people who come and go with their, uh, I don't know anybody that comes and goes with cats, but with dogs and Nobody ever talks about getting asked for the paperwork at the border coming south into Mexico. Going north to the United States, if you ever want to take them back, you'll need the paperwork. Uh, from another travel vlog in Mexico, it was mentioned that the plumbing for toilets is only one inch in diameter in Mexico and you have to place your used paper in the garbage can instead of the toilet so as not to clog up the toilets. I find this idea distasteful and not terribly sanitary. Is this true? Yes, Diane, it's true, but it's not everywhere. There are old sections, even here in, um, on the north shore of Lake Chapala, Via Nova, for instance. I went to rent a house up there before I owned a house here. And uh, they told me I couldn't flush toilet paper down the toilets. Some of that is because, yes, the old plumbing is very small and it will clog up. But that was like 50 years ago. So if you're living in a really old house that has really old plumbing, that can be the case. But modern plumbing is just not like that. Um, there are... Um, customs in Mexico that are difficult uh, to get rid of. And that's one of them. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a sign in the restroom at Costco in Guadalajara in the bathroom. And it says, please put your paper in the toilet. Because so many Mexicans believe that you need to do that everywhere. And you don't need to do it everywhere anymore. So... If you're told that about a place you're going to rent, just rent somewhere else. That's the only place I know of uh, around here at Lakeside. Maybe a couple of older neighborhoods in Chapala where that kind of plumbing might be a problem. By the way, while we're talking about that, and he says it's distasteful and it grosses her out, I've certainly been in restrooms like that where there are trash cans full of used paper. And it does not smell. Now, I can't explain to you why. But as an RVer, I can also tell you that a lot of RVers do that. They don't put paper in their holding tanks. And again, I, um, I've tried that in my motorhome. I don't continue to do it, but it doesn't smell. <laughs> again, I can't tell you why. Uh, that's probably enough about toilet paper for today. Uh, her third question, do you know any single widowed women who moved to Mexico on their own? Diane, I've been married 46 years. I'm not allowed to know anything about single widowed women. <laughs> but seriously, yes, I know many. And there are probably more single widowed women here on the north shore of Lake Chapala as expats than there are single widower men. Um, uh, I think that's just the nature of the human race, that women live longer than men. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of single women here, and there are clubs and social gatherings and plenty of opportunity to uh, have an enjoyable life as a single 
a widowed woman on the north shore of Lake Chapala. Thank you for your questions, Diane. I hope I answered them. Uh, moving on. Uh, let's see. This is uh, Be On Time, and that's T-H-Y-M-E. I thought that was cute. A B on time. As Rosemary... How's that go? Da, 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 da. Never mind. Does it amaze you that over 31,000 people love to hear what's on your mind today? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, beyond time, it amazes me. Uh, beyond time says, I enjoy your conversational style. I appreciate you and your stories. Thanks. I would love to see old photos of when you first visited and then ultimately moved to Mexico. Well, I'll put a few old photos in here if I can find them. Here's an old picture. That's me performing behind the... Teatro de Guiado in the historical district of downtown Guadalajara. Next question. This is from Melissa Honey. Do you always smack your lips when you talk? <laughs> yep, and you're not the first one to mention it. You're not the first YouTube commenter to mention it. But the first person to mention it was probably a speech teacher in college, yes. I, I do smack my lips when I talk. I'm sorry, you know, I'm still working on being perfect. It has been my observation of the human race that a whole lot of you gave up on that and just <laughs> decided to quit while you're ahead. I'm still working on that one. Thanks for pointing it out. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.